friends, Amanda here. Welcome back to Handmade Know Hallmark. Today's video is a focusing on sharing the comparison between Distress Oxide inks and distress uh, regular Distress inks. I want to share with you how they can look different but still achieve the same beautiful card design and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So I really wanted to share the difference between dis regular Distress inks and Distress Oxide inks because you can get uh, completely different looks with both of these inks. They're both the same colors, but they're both formulated differently. So I have two card panels here. This is some bright green cardstock. I believe it's like green apple maybe. Um, I'll make sure to link in the description below what color cardstock this is. But I wanted to start with a nice bright green. Now I typically like to ink blend on Bristol Smooth, but I really wanted to start with a green color so that I could kind of fade it into the middle. Now you could easily just choose all greens and ink blend onto white cardstock, but um, this is my preferred way when I'm doing um, kind of like comparison, just because you can really see a difference. So I'm going in with Rustic Wilderness. Um, with this, These are my regular Distress inks. Now I'm gonna speed this video up here. I don't ink blend this fast, but you can see here that the regular Distress inks are they're kind of more harsh. You get more, now they will, again, dry back a little bit and soak into the paper just a little bit because they're formulated as, um, I don't like to say that they're a dye ink because they react with water, but they're different than the oxide inks because the oxide inks have pigment in them. So you're gonna get a softer look than you would with the regular Distress inks. And this is what I wanted to kind of share with you guys is that you can go, you can use the same exact inks, but you can get different looks with each one. So again, I'm going in with Rustic Wilderness and I was gonna use my um, blending brushes, but I decided to go in with the regular foams because that's what I used on the first card, just to show you that um, you can, again, get different looks using the same products, the same colors, same products, those sorts of things. So again, I'm going in with that Rustic Wilderness around the outside and ink blending towards the center, trying to leave the middle nice and bright. And you can already see that there is a difference between the first card that I ink blended and this one. This one's a lot softer. The colors aren't as vibrant. It's a bit more muted than you would get with the regular Distress Inks because these have um, pigmentation in them um, that kind of softens them and it's just a different um, chemical makeup, I guess. I'm not an expert when it comes to these, but I just wanted to share the difference. And of course, I had to use my favorite green and gold colors, but here you can see that there is a pretty big difference between the two of them. One looks very, very soft, and the other one is a bit more vibrant and bold, and I just thought it was a really fun way to create a card. So I'm gonna make two cards using um, these backgrounds. And again, this is just to share you know, what they both look like. You can achieve the same looks with a card using either one of these inks. So if you only have oxide inks, you can make a beautiful card um, do, using those. Or if you have just the regular distress, in, distress inks, you can make a, a card with them as well and get the same looks with either one. Um, this Christmas tree stamp was from MFT. I want, I can't find it anywhere. I want to say that it might have been like a freebie, like if you buy so much that they give you a freebie. So I do apologize that if this isn't available, but I'll link down to a couple of stamps that are uh, similar, but you can use any stamp. Um, the card I shared last time, uh, a couple of uh, a couple of card videos ago, um, I used something similar. I did greens and golds. And... I think that stamp set from Simon Says, the um, Christmas Greetings one, I think would work really well. Anything that's kind of big and large that can fill up that space will make a really pretty card. You don't necessarily have to have this stamp. Again, this video is focusing on the comparison between the two. Just going to hit that with my heat gun. I'm using um, Simon Says Stamp Antique Gold Embossing Powder. Again, as you guys know, my favorite colors, greens and gold, but again, I was really interested to see how these cards compared when I made them exactly the same. Um, I wasn't really focusing on like the card design or anything like that because I've done this card design like a million times. I just wanted to see how they looked and which one I liked better. And to be perfectly honest with you, 
I think I kind of liked the one with the regular distressings more than the other one just because it was a little bit bolder I guess I think I really like the intensity behind it but again it's personal preference you can kind of go with whatever you want I'd like to see maybe a comparison with blues would be really fun the different blue colors that they have you could do this with any of the distress inks you know make a couple of comparisons you know make little swatches so that you can see you know kind of go for a look if you're looking for more of a softer tone you're going for something that looks a little bit you know soft and you know calm kind of like a winter scene or something like that I would go with your distress oxides if you're trying to go for something more dramatic and bold I would definitely try to use your um, distress your regular distress inks and that didn't stamp down very well the first time, so I decided to go back in and try again. All I did was brush off that embossing powder before I heat set it, and I could go back in and restamp it. That's the really good thing about having a misty or any type of stamp positioner is that you can go back in and restamp something. This time it worked out really nicely. Just a couple of spots that needed fix. I'm just going in with a dry brush to brush away that embossing powder. I don't want it in an area that I don't like. Again, going to hit that with my heat gun and again I think these make for really dramatic cards and you could really I think mass produce something like this in different colors do a whole bunch of ink blended panels and then just go in and do a bunch of embossing I think would be really fun those look super nice and you could definitely leave those here um, but again I have to add a little bit more just because I'm extra <laughs> and I'm going to go in after I get my station cleaned up here and I'm going to do a little gold edging. Now you could easily use gold cardstock or and you know glitter cardstock, anything like that. Um, this is kind of a favorite technique that I've done in the past where I go around the edge and I do kind of an organic border or mat. Um, this time I'm using some of the uh, Tim Holtz um, boundary wax this stuff is really really neat because at first when you put it on it doesn't seem like it does a whole lot um, I'm going in with just using my finger if you're not keen on getting messy just you can use a paintbrush or you can just run the edge of the paper across the ink I wanted mine to be really kind of organic and haphazard along the edge I wasn't worried about it being super perfect and this you have to kind of move quickly with the foundry wax because it does dry pretty quick but once you get it rubbed on to your project here, you just hit it with your heat gun and that's when it pops. It really shines after you hit it with the heat gun. I don't know what the formula is behind it or what activates it or anything like that, but it like sets it really fast and it looks super, super cool. So I got that one done. Again, nice soft card, kind of a muted look, very kind of elegant and just really really nice and I'm going to do the same thing with this other card I got a little bit too carried away on this one but I still like it I think they look really nice just using that foundry wax rubbing it on the edge so this is a really nice alternative if you don't have like gold embossing powder I haven't used it for anything other than like splatters and this type of technique but I'd be interested to find out how it works like any other way I think it'd be kind of neat Gonna hit that with my heat gun again. I think that looks really cool. I love that it's really kind of messy along the sides. And again, this one's a little bit more bold with that embossing and that ink blending. Again, so two beautiful cards, but two very different styles and looks behind them. Um, and that's really what I was going for with this video today is that no matter what kinds of distress inks that you have you can create some really nice dramatic cards again if you're trying to go for a softer look you know use those oxides because they are going to give you a softer look and if you wanted it to be even softer instead of using the round blending brushes use the um like the the other blending brushes like the bristle brush ones um, you're going to get an even softer look and you can use those bristle brushes with the regular distress inks as well you're going to get a similar look um, but it might be just a tiny bit softer now i haven't done a comparison video with these and regular dye inks just because i don't 
I only have like one set of dye inks, so I can't really compare anything. But um, I really do love the way that this these two cards turned out. I think they look really elegant regardless of which inks you use. Again, if you're going for something a bit softer, I was going to go put um, some gold embellishments on these. But I decided to not do it because I felt like it was just too much and I put them away. <laughs> so again, two beautiful cards, two different um, formulas of distress inks, but still really neat idea, really cool way to kind of check out your products and have a little bit of fun. And that's it for this video today. I really hope you enjoyed this fun comparison video. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. It lets YouTube know you're enjoying all of the content that I'm bringing to you. And if you hit the subscribe and the little notification bell, you'll be notified every time that I upload a video, especially during my Christmas series. Again, I hope you guys are enjoying it and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll catch up you guys again at the end of the month after my vacation and I'll see you again soon. Bye. On screen, I've got a few videos that I think you'll enjoy. Consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more videos on my YouTube channel.